Brendan, thank you so much for taking the time to sit Pleasure. down with us, to have a conversation. I want to just get your take on management and all the, all the extras that come with it. What's been your biggest challenge, do you feel, as a manager? Um, I think uh, as a manager, it's always the easy part is on the training field, working with the players. The challenges are always uh, everything outside of the football in terms of media. and But you learn with experience to, to deal with essentially what it is you need to, to do uh, in order to make the players better. Mm -hmm. uh, the difficulties are also having to tell players that they're not playing whenever they've given you everything every day. You know, they're working hard, they're working um, tirelessly every day, but you can't put them in the team. And that's where football is slightly different from any other business. You know, you, the players, 25 players work hard all week, but you can only pick 11 players. Um, but th there, there's always challenges in, in football, but I try to embrace them and, uh, and like I say, my enjoyment comes from working with, with people and, uh, and working with the players on the field. When it comes to management, what's the most important factor that a manager can have? Is it the man management nowadays at the highest level? Because they're already fantastic players, we all know that. Mm. But getting the best out of them, that seems to be the issue for some managers at least. Yeah, I think before that it's about establishing a vision. So when you come into a club, establishing with the players so that they understand what direction they're, they're going in. So can you create uh, a mentality and, and, and a pathway for them in terms of, of which they can follow? And then, like you say, uh, it, it's, it's putting in place and defining how you want to work. That's also a challenge. Yes. And then with that, then the man management challenges, because they're all different. You know, the, something like the Premier League is what, over 70% of, of the, the, the league is, is foreign players. So it's, it's treating each individual and respecting their differences uh, culturally and football, uh, and then trying to bring that all together into, uh, into one team. But, uh, but yeah, but it's always about people. It doesn't matter how good someone is or, uh, or not. You're trying to maximise what you can get out of the players. And, and that is about them feeling as if you're doing everything you can to, to help them. Do you think it really helps if you're a people person, an extrovert as opposed to an introvert in your position? You know, I just think it's the, the, the players respect it when you can really help them. I think that uh, that is very important. The, the game has is, is, is really changed in terms of the psychology of it in, these last, in this last decade, and in particular now, society is different. And then the, the young players that have come through that society are, are there. And uh, so you have to deal with all of those issues different. You know, I think as a manager, you will always work with players in that age band of 16 to 35. Yeah. But each year, you move away from that as a manager. The key is, is still to understand how they work, how they function, stay in connection with them, but also um, manage them in order to, to motivate them to, to give their very best. I'm just fascinated by this because I spent about two weeks with Paul Clement in Malaysia. Mm. And obviously, you know, and we talked quite yes. a bit about you and there's similarities at the clubs you've both been at, the similarities in how young you both started coaching. Mm -hmm. Did you feel that lacking a proper footballing career, I know you had an injury, mm. can sometimes hinder you in terms of getting respect from a new dressing room or big characters or big names? Not really. I've never felt that. I've never felt that because I think ultimately your behaviour gets the respect. There's no doubt if you've been a top class player with many games, both internationally, the minute you walk into the changing room, you'll get the respect. But I think if you haven't had that, of course, I think it takes longer. There's no doubt it takes that little bit longer in, uh, in time. But you have to accept that. You know, I have great admiration for guys that have been top class players uh, and then gone into management and coaching because that's not easy, you know. Uh, and it's no guarantee of success either. No, as a no, manager. absolutely. So, um, but there's many different ways, there's many different paths to take. My path, like I say, like Paul's, was different, you know. Um, but ultimately, it's, it's how you work and the behaviour in your work that ultimately gives you, gives you the respect. 
How do you handle it when you come to a new club, be it here, Liverpool, Celtic, and you meet the squad for the first time? That must be so important. The first impressions, what the players are going to think of you, because they've probably got ideas in their head about you from what they've seen if they've never met you or played for you before. So it must be crucial, that first meeting, that first get-together. Yeah, but our first day together, I give them a short presentation on uh, outlining the vision for the club and how we had to be together. The club had been through a really traumatic season, you know, losing the boss and the real uh, pioneer for for the club and its modern state. And someone who was very close to everyone, the players and the staff, to then losing a the manager, that's never easy. Um, but it was important to offer the, the players that stability emotionally, so they knew that, listen, we're going to be okay and then, and then let them see what the future can look like. And understanding that the base of our work is based around the coaching, the how we prepare, and, and player and staff development. And reassure them that you know, we're here to succeed. And then, and then really touch on what that worker mentality looks like in order for us to succeed. So them steps are important, mm. of course. And then from that, you've created uh, you've created that sort of vision for them and then it's the ongoing process of creating an internal culture because that's what makes a difference you know you uh, you have to create the right culture if you can create the right culture that allows players to develop and improve then it gives you a great opportunity and how long do you think managers should be given to implement this on the pitch because we're living in a world where everyone expects instant results Brendan Rodgers comes to Leicester Let's start winning every single game. The man's got a proven track record so far. Mm. It's, it's a different culture to when you were growing up, probably watching football, and managers were given time. So how much time do you feel is appropriate for any given manager? It will always take time, especially when you're developing players, because young players aren't instantly ready unless they're special talents. You know? um, but society is... It's totally different now. You know, if you look at a waiting room in a hospital, people mm. don't want to wait anymore. Well, exactly. Instant. <laughs> they Everyone. want it instant. They want to go straight in and, and be seen. So you have to accept that that's a part of the business now. And you have to understand that, you know, results are important as early as you can. But you're always hoping that you have uh, an ownership that are stable and that understand the processes and how you work and knowing that in the end that you can get there with that stability. Obviously, with people wanting instant results, they'll get into social media, newspapers might pick up on it, and becomes, it can become very negative. So if something doesn't go right for you, how do you personally deal with all of the mess that comes with being a manager of a Premier League football club? How do you detox from football, detach yourself? Very, very easily. I don't read so much. And I'm also one with experience. I as a manager, I never suffer emotionally now with words because there is so much out there, mm. you know, now that there's, can be a, a negative. I always tend now to just look logically at the situation, look logically where it's at. And as long as you're giving your best and you're putting the work in and then you know that eventually you can get there. So, like I say, I... I you know, I respect all the social media and Twitter and everything else, but I'm not on it. So unless someone brings it to me, I don't see it. The papers? Do you read? No. 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 Sometimes if we win. If we win, and it's a good time to win. If you lose, you have no need. Okay. You know what they say. What about, how, how do you relax? I've, I know you don't have much time. I've worked with lots of managers. Tony Pulis, yeah. Paul Clement, and they say they don't yeah. have time for anything. Players can go home after training, they can go and have their dinner, watch TV, mm. PlayStation. What about yourself? Do you, do you watch any TV shows do you, or movies, books? I watch TV, I watch football. Okay. Yeah, I normally go More back. More football? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I normally will go back and at least, yeah, there's always a game I will watch of an evening. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's something that when it's your passion and when it's your love, you obviously have to be able to switch off. You know, one of the key things in football management is essentially you have to be able to say no sometimes. It's never personal. Yes. It's never personal. It's just you have to say no. 
So that means taking yourself out of things that you don't need to, to do. I like to relax, I like to spend time with family, I like to travel, you know, I like to understand new cultures. Yeah, the world, when I was growing up, seemed such a big place. Now when you're an adult and you have the ability to travel, I enjoy that side of it because it really is a small place. Um, and then when I have the chance to, to break the cycle, I do that. I'm very curious, I like to read. Mm read a lot, especially in leadership and business and successful people. And so biographies and... Uh... Yeah, yeah. And, and fortunately in my, in my career I've, I've had around me uh, really, really successful people. You know, the major shareholder at, uh, at Celtic is a guy called Dermot Desmond. And Dermot in his own right is a hugely successful businessman. You know, the owners at uh, at Liverpool, yeah. John Henry, Tom Werner, Mike Gordon, hugely successful business guys. So, uh, so I've had the good fortune to, to learn off uh, lots of people with great experience in being successful. Out of interest, what TV shows do you watch though? Game of Thrones? No, I've never watched it. Not one episode? Not one episode. I wouldn't know anyone in it, to be honest. Does that sound old? No, or? it doesn't. There's some people <laughs> who, who just aren't into it, but there's lots of people who are. But. Yeah, no, no. I, I would watch documentaries and, and whatnot of various real-life situations. Yeah. But, uh, but unfortunately, I'm, I'm pretty much sport okay. is, is what I watch. Uh, final two questions, yeah. running out of time. I'm from Asia. I'm half, half Asian myself. I love seeing representation in the Premier League from Asian players. Do you expect to see more in the future? It could be... South Korea, Japan, Malaysia, maybe even one day. We have someone who's um, half Filipino at Cardiff, Neil Etheridge. So he's the first. Yeah, I work Filipino. with Neil. You work with Neil. I work with Neil. I, I work with the, the two boys as well, James and Phil, young yeah, husband. When you were at Chelsea. When I was at Chelsea, yeah. So Do you expect to see more? Boys. I'm sure that there will be. I think, the, like you say, you see the, the culture, uh, the different nationalities now culturally in, in the Premier League. Uh, and there's no doubt these players. Uh, are hugely talented and for sure at, at some point there will be more players with the, the with Asian background coming in and and in my in my travels with teams on tour I've come across lots of really good players so it's just about timing I don't think I think it will happen it's just it's just time and work permits probably absolutely will we be seeing you in Malaysia anytime soon by any chance just Maybe on holiday? Well, you never know. I'm sure at some point. I, lo I love Asia, I love the travel, and uh, I'm sure at some point. Perfect. Thank you very much, Brendan. Pleasure. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.